shouting you out. There we go. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's so nice to see you all again. The new faces, the, no offense, old faces. And everybody watching at home, hello. Those of you who maybe had the chance to check in yesterday, um, wow, we had fun. These classes are always great, but sometimes the fun doesn't really come until like day two or three. So I have very high expectations for the day. No, it was, it was, there was light bulbs going boom, boom, boom yesterday. And then we met this morning as we always do and um, I like to hear from them what their experience was because I'm usually really busy talking up here. And also the beautiful thing about the community of singers is to hear their impressions of each other and what clicked for them. Because many times our big lessons also come from watching others and seeing what really works and go, oh, that's what that is. And that's what it is to let go. I still don't know how to do it, but I can tell what it is. I mean, I, as, a, as a mental exercise for singers, which is a lot of fun. Again, this is a playground. It's a beautiful playground. This is the kind of weather in New York where I think, I could live here all the time. <laughs> and then it rains, and I'm like, ah, oh, no. Um, but it's wonderful. We already have established a great rapport already, but just a reminder that these classes really are intended to be about process, which is interesting because we get to a show and we think, OK, now I've got to do it. But it's still a process, even the show, from moment to moment, note to note. You're navigating whether you feel good or whether you're tired or your voice is on or your voice is a little bit low. So really, it's all process. So that's kind of great. And the more we give in to that and the more that's supported by our community around us, the freer we, we at least have the opportunity to be. It's up to us to take that freedom. But if we hold the space here, um, as we always do, it seems. It's, it's really wonderful. We are going to start today. I mean, we're just going to burst out of the cannon. Tom Rakewell. Stravinsky. Let's do it. Trayvon. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Trayvon Walker, and today I will be singing Here I Stand from the Rake's Progress by Igor Stravinsky. Here I stand, my constitution sound, my brain not ill favored, my wit ready, my heart. Light. I play the industrious apprentice in a copy book. I submit to the drudge's yoke. I slave through a lifetime to enrich others and then be thrown away like a nod bone. Not I have not grave doctors assured us that good works are of no avail, for heaven predestines all. In my fashion, I may profess myself of their party, and herewith entrust myself to fortune. Since it is not by merit we rise or we fall, but the favor of fortune that governs us all, that governs us all. Why should I labor for what in the end she will give me for nothing if she be my friend? If she be not, why, the wealth I might gain For a time I might toil would at last be in vain Would at last be in vain Till I die then of fever or by life 
fighting have struck, let me live by my wits and trust to my luck and trust to my luck. My life lies before me. Just awesome. You're so great. And I <laughs> I don't well, I had to remind myself, do you mind we talk about your age? Sure. I had to remind myself, <clears throat> this is another one. Trayvon's 24. Okay? Dude. <laughs> yeah. Are you mm, are you impatient with yourself sometimes? Okay, yeah. I want to go like doop, doop, poop, and like <laughs> clear it. Because I think part of getting through the young artistry is finding a balance of impatience and patience. We were talking this morning actually with Deborah Birnbaum, my guide on this, that this is quite a young group overall, 20, 23, 24, and with such sophisticated musicality, such advanced training, technical know-how, I mean, it's really, it's an impressive group. But sometimes also the body's like, oh, wait, 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 I don't know how to do this yet. And our impatience is sometimes, especially when you're smart and super talented and have such knowledge of where you want to go, we demand a bit more of our body than it's quite ready. I'm not saying you're doing that at all. I think you're singing so well in, in, in proportion with your body, with everything. But that impatience in terms of, ah, that's how it has to go and I'm not there yet. Take your foot off the gas a little bit, okay? And imagine that your best friend was living what you're living what advice would you give your best friend to like chill out a little bit? Yeah, have more grace with themselves. Say that one more time. Have more grace with themselves. So do you think you should have more grace with yourself, Trayvon? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And I see it on your face now. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic because that being, you know, so tied to it has to be this way leaves no space for art. It leaves no space for creativity. It leaves no space for improvisation, for the magic to enter. If you've got the reins so tight on that horse, this is what it, speaking of, <laughs> that, this is what it has to be. The horse is gonna revolt at one point. And if you kind of like, I'm not sure where this is going and it's getting a little bit out of control, but I trust you, you know? Yeah. And that is gonna be golden for you as you, I mean, we could cast you today in a lot of things. But what I want is you to take the foot off the gas a hair mentally while you just finishing line up, line up these things. And then Trayvon, who's going to enter this world, is going to be solid and free as an artist. And that's what we want on the stage. So your work now is to be patient and keep, keep forging ahead because you have time. You have so much time. And what we want to arrive is somebody who is at peace and graceful and powerful and commanding and easy, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Good luck with that. Some of us are still, <laughs> some of us are still working on that. Now, there's a couple things, and then I am gonna throw you a curveball, but don't hate me. Um, so, this okay. This is a tricky recitative, and I profess I really don't know this music, um, and I've never seen the show. But let me see what I can find. 
because I'm just going to go to the score now, right? Mm -hmm. And there is not an accent until measure 33. Uh, and here with and trust myself to fortune, mm -hmm. two accents. But we have a very rhythmic, very active, very um, syncopated recitative, mm -hmm. which you're attacking in a great way, meaning like you're on it. It's very thrilling. You're, I love the way you're using the text. All of that is great. What I get is one level of dynamic, and when the accent comes, it, it doesn't land because it's already been bam, 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 bam. So all of these, I say, blah, da, if you don't think I say, all those high notes, bam, bam, but it's more what we were talking about this morning. Mm -hmm. It's coming from under here and I, ya, da, 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 ba, boy, ya, da, 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 da. and then when you go to fortune, we get the accent. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Um, there's also, when there is no orchestra, enjoy that. So for example, to enrich others and then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. I know it's very fast rhythmically there, but you've got plenty of time and the conductor I'm pretty certain would catch you on the downbeat of 29. Gnawed mm -hmm. bone is hard to get out. Yeah. It's hard to understand and it's so glorious. Yeah. A gnawed bone. So triple that and you're so great with your diction that you end double the B. Nod bone, like a nod bone. Mm -hmm. mm, ah, die. And then you're off, right? Mm -hmm. um, when it is piano, surprise us. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Not I have not grave doctors assured us that good works are of no avail. Go into this seething what? What's it all for? Mm -hmm. So when you go piano, really go piano, and it stays piano, all the way to measure 30, it's just a little forte piano. So he's setting it up, piano, all the way to that first accent, mm -hmm. okay? So don't be any less aggressive, disdainful, all of those things that are coming across so beautifully, but do it more with this Friday night, yeah? Yeah. And see if you don't surprise yourself a little bit. So I'm just going to remind you, do a couple breaths here. Um, pretend I'm a round yoga ball and just breathe in here. Feel, I'll, I'll got, I've, I've got you. Just catch here. And go shh. Breathe out on SH more. Yeah. And do one more. Just feel this here. Yeah, and that's where all of those first. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Very strong. That's where you are. That's your power. Do you have perfect pitch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Trayvon. So let's start from the beginning. Okay. <laughs> Here I stand. Hold on. Where do you stand? Here. <laughs> okay. I think that's more interesting than here I stand. It's here I stand. I'm not going anywhere. This is my world. Mm -hmm. Today it's my world. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Here. Here I stand. Great. Now, because, sorry, because also you're giving us, this is different, very different English diction from yesterday, right? Yeah. And you're giving us all the R's and all that. So you can also claim your territory with the really great shadow vowel on stand. Okay. Here I, here I stand. Mm -hmm. Take that world, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Defiance. Here I stand, my constitution sound, my frame not ill-favored, my wit ready, my heart light. Yeah, great. Now play with that. So beautiful. This is such a good aria for you because we get your voice right from, like, you're connected right from the beginning. It's glorious. My heart light. Play with that. Yeah. Light. I can do whatever I want with it. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Show off a little bit that. Okay? St now, also, let's really be precise on the cutoff. It's right on beat two, and that'll give us one millisecond of silence between you and the orchestra, and it's going to make us go, <gasps> if you carry over, we lose the silence. Mm. If you're right on beat two, it's going <gasps> to, one millisecond of like, oh, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Okay? Try it. 
Tiny, tiny, tiny detail. Mm -hmm. Come scritto. And it's, it's to, you know, sometimes I don't like being pedantic, but in that case, do you feel the power of that? Yeah. The power of silence? The power of you commanding the orchestra to shut up for a second? <laughs> now you can start. Boom. I'm Tom Rakewell. You see, do you feel that power? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I feel like you're, I'm your Nick right now. Okay. Here I stand. My constitution sound. My brain not ill favored. My wit ready. My heart light. I play the industrious apprentice in a copy book. I submit to the dreaded yoke. I slave through a lifetime to enrich others. And then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. <laughs> Not I. And there I think you can take time. Let it land. Okay. So listen to the difference. Then thrown away like a gnawed bone. Not I. Like a gnawed bone. Not I! You feel the difference? Yeah. Power. You're commanding the tempo of this. You're finally taking control of your life. Okay? Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yeah. So good. I think all those, ah, oh, yeah, da, 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 da. Let it be more like bow and arrow. Do you ever use that image? Like, versus, um, I, yeah. you know? Try it, just, just for fun, just, and don't sing full voice, but just feel that, there's the release. Now try it the other way. I, there's nowhere to go. Yeah? Yeah? Just play with that. Yeah. Um, now the other thing that, that I, you could play with, here I stand. Constitution, yeah. and then go into this like snaky legato a little bit, a little bit less vertical. Mm -hmm. um, all the crisp diction, but with this pole under it. So immediately we get a change of texture from you. Mm -hmm. All of these, it's like Errol Flynn. <laughs> I always pull him out in these things. You can Google him. Uh, <laughs> Bob Newhart yesterday. Did anybody watch the Bob Newhart thing? You need to watch it. It's okay. hilarious. It's very funny. Um, so this is why you have to pay attention to all three days, people. Um, here I stand, my constitution sound, my constitution sound, through all those consonants. Mm -hmm. And then we get that you're trying desperately to be in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one more time. From here I stand. Here I stand. <laughs> My constitution sound, my frame not ill favored, my wit ready, my heart light. Yeah. I play the industrious apprentice in a copy book. I submit yeah. to the drudge's yoke. Yeah. I slave through a lifetime to enrich others. And then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. Can, can that be uglier? And then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. Mm -hmm. How dare they treat me like that? That, that doesn't have to be pretty. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you feel those eyes? Yeah. That's got to feel good. Yeah. Easier. A lot easier. We love that. You guys, yeah. And then, and then you're pulling us along with you. And we feel this tsunami of stuff that's happening inside you. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Um, uh, and just do, and then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. Okay. And then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. Yeah. Make way longer. And then be thrown away like a, with, and go through that diphthong. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And then be thrown away like a gnawed bone. Oh, but Not I. No, bow and arrow that one. Yeah? yeah? Not I. I'm not grave doctors, assure us that good works are of no avail, for heaven predestined all in my fashion. 
fashion, I may profess myself of their party. Yeah. And herewith entrust myself to fortune. Since it is not my merit. Have you won the since it, since it, since it, since it, no, since it, a ah. hmm. little bit more swagger. Since it is not by merit we rise or we fall, but the favor of fortune that governs us all, that governs ah. us all. Now ask this question. Why should I labor for what in the end she will give me for nothing if she be my friend? Now. Why, if she be not my okay. well? Yeah. Now, make this more mysterious. Okay. While, you feel how it goes dark? While, if she be not why the why? So start it more. Mm, what, is, what, is, what is this about? A little bit. So that almost you're almost kind of being possessed a little bit as this idea is getting in you, and you're figuring out until you you just decide to just go with it. Um, and I'm just going to keep going, and I want you to think about this as we go through the aria. All of these are your bow and arrows. Uh, this beggar shall ride, bow and arrow it, totally bow and arrow it, and then this, make this your, your, your money moment, right? Mm -hmm. This beggar shall ride, I mean really bring it home, okay. uh, Broadway style, okay. there, okay? Yeah. Now. I mean, this is, a, this is a big aria to learn. It's really tricky, lots of words and all that. But now go into that place of really asking, why, what, what is this about? In a way, you have it all figured out, but you don't. You're still discovering it. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's sort of this like, what was I thinking? They do that? They do that? What was I think? I'm cra I've been insane. You know, so let it, let it grow in discovery because it's a very strong aria, it's very angular, it's very straightforward, but don't lose that sense of, of um, discovery and exploration even though it's so concrete. Mm -hmm. Find those, in the, harmonically, there's, it comes like on that while, right. right? Find those moments to dig in and while, all those texts, because you know when we're trying to figure something out, we go, mm, we just chew the words a bit more. Mm. You already do that so well, but you have liberty to like bring it home okay. if you want. All of these pickups, since it, why should I labor, labor? Try and make those all really legato. Okay. And if they're not legato yet, slow it down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Since it is not by merit we rise or we fall, but the favor of fortune that governs us all, that governs us all. Bring them into you. Why should I labor for what in the end she will give me for nothing if she be my friend? Really tell them. While if she be not my for wealth I might gain, or time by my toil would at last be in vain, would at last be in vain. Till I die then of fever or by lightning am struck, let me live by my wits and trust to my luck and trust to my luck. Yeah. My eye flies before me, the world is so wide. Come, wishes me, horses, this beggar shall ride. This beggar shall. No, no. 
Listen, yeah. Okay. Take your moment. Okay. You know how to do that. Mm -hmm. This beggar shall Yeah? Mm -hmm. This beggar shall ride. I wish I had money. <laughs> <laughs> so good.
much do you hate me right now? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It felt good. It felt good. Did it feel? I'm going to tell you what I felt. It felt super present. Yeah. And it didn't feel in your head. Mm -hmm. I think the discipline of thinking out and reminding myself to think out gets me out of that technical land. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more magical there. And, I, and in that way, I'm being more present. And it feels really good to stay there. It makes me want to stay there. Did your voice work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did your voice work? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are there things you want to go and continue to work on? Yeah. No problem. But did you feel the connection to them? Yeah. Did your voice betray you? No. And it felt a lot more secure than when you were living up here. Yeah? Yeah. There's a moment to live up here. There's many moments to live up here, especially when you're doing pedagogy on an aria like this. Hello. Okay, there's my head voice. So my, I'm doing this with my breath, my that, and that's very much in your head. And you calculate it and you work on it like a surgeon. <clears throat> Fantastic. But there's a moment you have to trust that work. Mm -hmm. And you have to trust it throughout the process of when you've got there, when you've arrived, and when you're not quite there yet. I think you're there with this aria. You don't think it yet, but that's fine. This, I would hear, I would hear this in an audition, I'd be like, wow, 24, wow. Okay, I know exactly what I want him to do now. So I think you're there with this aria. Um, but that doesn't mean anything until you believe it. But the only way you're going to get to the magic spot is to throw yourself into it which means abandoning that inner voice, your Nick shadow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to say, Nick, I'll talk to you in a half hour. Give me my notes later. But in this moment, it really is, it's scary, but the only way you're going to approach the magic is to leap. Otherwise, the grip is there, and the horse will run, but it's going to be uncomfortable. And you might cross the finish line, okay, but it's not going to be first and easy. Yeah. This is fantastic. I think the, both of these arias are amazing for you. And I love, what do you start with when you audition? Um, it's a toss up between Here I Stand, Lonely House, and Miles from Turn of the Screw by Britain. Ooh, yeah, cool. I love Here I Stand because it's like, first of all, it's psychological. It's subliminal. So the audition panel goes, oh, here he is. And it's a very strong, like a boom. It's a, a pronouncement of, of who you are. So I love that as a first aria. Mm -hmm. And it feels super stable, especially the more grounded and more connected you are with the breath like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like Lonely House is a beautiful opening too, but you got to believe in it more. Yeah. And like what happened now is uh, you just make everybody... Here's what the audition panel would do. Tell me if I'm wrong. They would go, oh, thank God, that was a relief. Like, we needed something like that today. Something pure, something musical, something beautiful. So that's also a good opening, but it depends on how you feel. Mm -hmm. Singers, the strategy of what you start with is really, really important about how you present yourself. So both of these will work, but it depends on you and Nick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit. Um, but I think it's remarkable what you do at, at your age, because it's very sophisticated musically, too. Thank you. So the more you start to believe that, even the further you're, you're going to fly. Yeah. Any questions? I don't know. I think I'm good right now. <laughs> I think you're good, too. I think you're better than good. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Just beautiful. We are jamming with Handel. Let's do it. Agustin Bienvenido! Like 30 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. <laughs>
So hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Agustin Penino. I come from Uruguay. And today we will continue uh, with Stile Amare and the recit before. Hope you have a different experience this time, a new experience. <laughs> Si tarda o mai, o neghitose labbra, non ti setar con queste poche stille, che Elisa ti presenta l'empio color della tua sorte iata. Awesome, that's one sentence. Try again. Okay. That's one sentence. Okay, awesome. Better. Because it's less da 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 um, I love a good recit. <laughs> Ooh, so, but what... It's one sentence. We've got to keep the, the, the thought going with the various parentheses. Okay. Right? And so, l'empio furor della tua sorte irata. And when you do finally get to the end of the sentence, you can, there you can punch it a little okay. bit. Okay? Um, the other thing is to find it in a way that is more okay. spoken. Okay. Because we're going to get the accompanato and then the aria a little bit more. Che più si tarda o mai, tarda o mai. This you can zhuzh together okay. a little bit more. Not quite so clean. O negitose, o negitose, negitose. Can show your furor, your anger. Okay. The double T and then it kind of spits out. Um, se labbra. A dissetar con queste poche stille. Okay. Con queste poche stille. Okay. And then, that Elisa a te presenta l'empio furor. Legati, legatissimo there. Okay. That's how you get l'empio furor. Right? To give okay. that indication. Della tua sorte irata. When do you take the decision to drink? Okay. When do you take that. the decision? In the rest? Yeah. Before. Yeah. Before. before. Della tua sorte irata? Si beva. Great. Then, sarà irata? Si, si beva. beva. Yeah. Si beva. Okay? Kay. Yes. I drink it. Yeah. I'm ready. Si, si beva. Si. Yeah. It's like a the process. Other... It's like si beva, but I'm not quite sure. Exactly. Yeah. Si. Si beva. Exactly. The first one Many times in these kinds of things, it's impulse. Exactly. Especially for a young man. Yeah, I'll drink it. Yeah. Yeah. I drink oh. it. Ah. I'll drink it. Si beva. Si. Si beva. I don't care what happens. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, text here. Bend Legato your knees here. a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. We're going low into your body today. Okay. Okay. Just like this morning. Yeah. Do that like. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Joel. Che più si tarda right. o mai. Awesome. Can that be more legato? Again, because it's a little bit funky. Like I always talk about being present and all of that, but also when you zoom out, this is a moment everybody's waiting for in the opera. Oh, here comes Stile Amare. We've been waiting for this. So it's a little bit of a game with an audience when, okay. when like, una furtiva arrives. It's like, okay, here we go. We all know what's coming, you know? Not that everybody would know with the Ptolomeo, but, you know. Um, so they this shoot. is something... They, <laughs> they shoot. They, maybe they will after this. <laughs> this is a long scene, right? Mm. And so it's also about the arc. Like, from the second we get, we're going somewhere. We're going all the way to your death. Yeah. You don't quite know that yet, but you, you know it. Yeah. So, you can start it like, Che più si or oh my, or, Che 
più si tardogna ormai onne ghittosa labbra si disetar con questa poche stile okay. yeah. I've had enough of uh, this kind of thing okay. so if you start it really legato sorry some of the words are a little bit scratched out so I don't know um, a bit more deliberate in how you start mm -hmm. and then it can wind up Always legato at the beginning because that's going to be mirrored in stile amare, etc. It can loosen as it goes, but on this kind of announcement, it's good. good. Can you also give us a big first, like it's the Theobor, and then a slow roll? Ominous. Okay. Enter into the marrow of that chord. Don't land on top of it. You landed on top. Did you feel that? Yeah. Okay, enter into the marrow of it. Wait. You guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a tiny thing. It's a really tiny thing. That's exactly what I mean about singing the harmony. Mm -hmm. Do it the other way. Land on top okay. of it. <laughs> same note, yeah. the exact same note and word, correctly in tune both times. And one is in the heart, and the other is like, whatever, nice voice. <laughs> Do that again. The good one or? That one, land on top of it. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing right with it. <laughs> Marrow. No, 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 no. In it. Yeah, so start over one more time. Um, this seems so silly, but it's kind of everything. Cause especially because you're sophisticated, you know, yeah. It starts there. Do you feel that? Yeah. You're in every syllable. Yeah. Do you guys hear that? Yeah. <laughs> No more lempio, lem, five M's. Lempio for all. Five M's, not three. Lempio for all. Okay, and then really sing lempio for all. Lempio for all. Della tua sorte irata. Awesome. That's a recipe. Si no, 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 no. <laughs> Joel, one more time. Can you go? musically chord to chord and hear the harmony. Listen to this. That's your death right there. Yeah. That's your whole life journey. That's your whole life journey. And if you go, do it one more time. of it is this is superfluous okay that's where you have to live okay okay in it marrow every syllable it's in the con
consonants too. The consonants, even when they're not voiced, have to be in the marrow of the harmony. It, they kind of, what's happening with you is they kind of, oh, nigito, they, oh, nigito, I'm in the marrow of that the whole okay. time. The opening line was great. Okay. Find your legs, find your lower back, find your legs. Lower back, really lower back, okay? And yeah, breathe out through behind your spine as we talked about. Yeah, and. Oh, more, can you do more mysterious, more ominous, yeah. Deeper in the marrow, deeper. Deeper, deeper, go. Go choose this chord choose it can you make that hurt more can you make it hurt yeah because if it doesn't hurt enough why drink If it's not so bad, <laughs> at least you can have it yourself. Yeah. But it's really bad. Okay. Yeah? Are you feeling this deeper? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you have to make those chord changes happen. Okay. Through your pain, through your words, through your suffering, all of that. Um, can we just do Que Elisa a te presenta? Yeah? I make that chord change. I mean, I, I like make it, mm, yeah. yeah? Don't stay on the surface. Yeah, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Otherwise, why bother? Yeah? And also, this is about getting you lower and not perching, right? In your body. So your breath is here. You're in the harmony. This is grave territory, right? So, okay, Elisa te presenta. Elisa te Every word. Presenta. No, no. In. Presenta. Go into the chord. Elisa te presenta. Yeah. L'empio furor. No, that's too easy. L'empio furor. L'empio furor. Mine hurts more. <laughs> Not that it's a competition. Because listen, 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 uh, just uh, I'll show you. <laughs> find it in for me I would find it in the dissonance okay okay it's not a time to be shy on that one okay yeah and it's the pain that's gonna make you drink okay. and the dissonance is just beautiful pain Kelisa te present present with the with the way you sing pres he's gonna have to change the chord under okay. you but you have to bring him connect into that yeah Kelisa te presenta, prese, presenta. Pull him along. Kelisa te presenta, l'envio d'oror, della tua sorte. No, 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 you, 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 um, you let it all go on della tua sorte. Della tua sorte, the fate, your, uh, your yeah. wicked fate. You went, della tua sorte, della tua sorte, ra. So all the consonants are vibrating too, okay? Della tua sorte, ra. Si bevo, si. 
Ja, nu, nu, nu. See, baby, see. You make him okay. play that chord. If you go, see, baby, see, and you land on top of it, it's not connected. Okay. It's not like, yeah, it's just not in the marrow. See, beva, see. And feel that weight of that dark chord there. Yeah? See, beva, see. See, beva. Okay, so, yeah. What is your thought process between the two bevas? It's like, I will drink it. But I will drink it? I think so. Are you asking me? No, I'm asking me. <laughs> oh. I'm asking to oh. Leo, yeah. Like, I, will drink, I will drink it. I, 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 I will drink it. Oh. Even when I, when I say the last C beva, it's, I'm not sure yet. I have ah, a whole okay. area to sing in. <laughs> okay, so then C beva, C. Okay. Question. Sipeva doesn't mean anything. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you ask the question and you can employ quadruple consonants that are still in the marrow of the sound and you can create a question at the end with how you release it. Sipeva. Done. No aria. Sipeva. Try it. Play with it. Si beva. Si beva. Si. Si beva. Is that four Bs? <laughs> si beva. Yeah. But mm, almost. Oh, I want you to be inside my brain. <laughs> Do you feel the impact of really using the B? Not yet. Okay. It, it shows hesitancy. Okay. You could also use it strongly. Si beva. Si beva. Okay. And it has to keep going with the question. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Si beva. And if that's solid, I would go si beva, si. I would connect those. Because okay. if, you, if you have three pauses, we're not sure where the hesitancy comes on. Okay. Si beva, si. And then in that rest, oh God, what have I said? Si beva, si. Si beva. Try it. Si beva, si. Si beva. In mano frate, barbara madre. I mean, we don't get as many great words in Italian as barbaro, right? <laughs> barbo ama, bar, bara madre. Yeah, that, that man enjoys it. Barbara madre. And all it is, is is really using the rolled R really well. Legato. Okay. You kind of go, barbara madre, barbara madre. Okay. Barbara madre. I would even... Uh, eight okay. M's, right? In mono frate. 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 Yeah. Then we hear your rage. You feel that? Yeah. In mono frate. In mono frate. If we know you hate him. Yeah. Not even speaking a word of Italian. <laughs> legato, legato, legato. And. In mono frate. Double the M. Triple it, quadruple it for you. Barbara Madre. Just what I spent. 
Okay, and choose that chord. In just one rasp. Oh, it's the best. It's amazing. In just one rasp. Okay, awesome. Okay, you're I so good. Do you see why I wanted to work yeah. on the recit with you? Yeah. It's so exciting. All of these releases make them very deliberate. Okay. Not lazy, not dissipated. You're raging. Okay. It's the opposite of si beva question. Terrible brother. Yeah. Awful mother. Terrible raspe. Yeah. You can hardly finish the name. You know? In, in, in umano fratel, barbora madre. In giusto raspe. Throw it out. Yeah. Okay? One more time. Legato. And it's not, we're not going to use the power of the voice here. We're going low okay. on our breath with the legato, and we're using the consonants on the breath. It's not pushing the voice. Okay? So legato, 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 legato. Yeah, but that's preparing you. Bum, bum, low, low, low. Mm. Okay. Okay. okay? And feel it. Thing. So if you go, I just started a chair. Della mia morte. It takes it all the way from the morte. Yeah. Uh, I just started a chair. Della mia morte. So jump on the della. And that's also, you're almost always interrupting the orchestra on these accompanied recitatives. Okay. Yeah? Uh, so, um, tutti. Attack it yeah. more. It's yeah. if you if you go. Mm, da, la, it feels very um, settled and like you're at peace with it. Yeah. Mm, da, la, first of all, it's not what's written. It's just after an eighth. But if you da 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 mm, da la, mi amor, da, and I would also because of the way it's written musically, I would go with the music here. Me more than the text. Okay. Because morte, morte, okay, we know you're gonna die. But della mia morte. <gasps> and then, it's the surprise of the adagio. Mm -hmm. Play with that. See, I mean, okay. you, it's an option, you know, but it, it could be dramatic, it okay. could be cool. So can we go tutti? And you feel now the difference of the two tutti? Yeah. yeah. Tutti, tutti, tutti. Yeah. Tutti. loving, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ma tu consorti amata. I love you. Okay. That's an option. Yeah. Ma tu, ma tu. Vibrate. Ma tu consorti amata. Non 
danger. No. Yeah, but but you can um in this case because we've had a couple rests already. Sorry, this is like really pedantic stuff. No. Okay. Just do it with the end. You yeah. don't have to break. Yeah. But six ends for you on that. <laughs> because listen to the difference. Non pianger, no. Non pianger, no. Yeah. It's also, it's starting to affect you already a little yeah. bit. So your energy is a little bit less vertical, maybe, mm -hmm. right? So you can start painting the idea that already you feel a bit strange. Don't wait for the aria. Yeah? La tu. Start there. Vibrate. Low. Go. Consortium. Legato, 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 go. Non pianger. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You've got a long rest there. You right? It's a whole yeah. half note. Non pianger. Non pianger. And now, okay, okay. <laughs> on the top of all of it yeah you go into the tunnel of the marrow of the tiny go yeah. and keep drilling keep drilling i'm okay? being too polite <laughs> well <laughs> maybe maybe that's what it is i'm not sure but there's a lot more depth there okay and you, I know you feel it, and you kind of know, but I'm just holding you to the fire a bit. Okay. Well, a lot, because you can do it, you know? And I want, it, I want you to start feeling the difference of sitting on top of the line yeah. and making, creating all of this around you because you, it's got to, mm, and you keep, uh, it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but this is so painful. Yeah. And where do you feel pain? In the core of your being. Mm. And it's endless. When you're hurting, I mean really hurting, there's no end to it. It is dark, it is black, yeah. and it goes deeper, and it goes deeper. And you're kind of, uh, I mean, dead man walking. I thought I couldn't cry anymore. There's more. Non pianger no. Mentre che lieto spiro, spiro, basta, basta. You're already losing okay. your life force a little okay. bit. Okay. So just, just keep drilling. Okay. Yeah. Ma tu. Vibrate. Ma tu. In the middle, go. Consorti. More legato. Legato. Legato in the t in the harmony. Legato. Non pianger. Wait. Mentre che lieto spiro. Basta. No, no, no. Oh. Basta. There's a chord change. Uh, uh, feel the feel the chord under you. Basta. Versus, basta, chiodi com. Yeah. I'm maybe not explaining it well, but do yeah. you, hear, you hear the difference? Yes, yes. Basta, chiodi com. Basta, chiodi com. I have no choice but to go. Basta, chiodi com. Dude, you're 20. 
I'm asking you, like, for the work of a, of a 54-year-old mezzo who's lived a little. <laughs> but stay in there. So just technically more s vibrate in the harmony with the consonants okay. as well as the vowels. Non pianger no. More consonant. <laughs> You guys feel that? Yeah? And then this recipe could be a hundred pages long and you would never lose us. Okay. Because you don't. It's what you felt with the, the, yeah. um, the elastic today, right? It's just that the more you keep drilling and the more you keep going and it gets more refined and every chromatic and every syllable is right. You do not give us the opportunity yeah. to let go. We're with you a hundred percent. But the minute you go, da -da 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 we're like, oh God, why is Handel so boring? <laughs> and in this, it feels like the most modern of everything. Yeah. And a big, big, big tool for you that you've not been using is the consonants. Okay, yeah. Those also have to be in the harmony. Even if it's a... Or a s. Okay. It's still in the harmony. This, watch this back. What you just did here without me prompting you were finding you were in okay. tomorrow that's it in this kind of piece and this for me right now is like where your voice wants to be in this kind of music okay because it's it's ethereal okay it's otherworldly and and this kind of music is yeah it's good okay. it's good okay okay makes sense it, yeah. isn't that amazing it's amazing work going in like that and it looks so freaking simple on the page yeah. but just when you go La -di -ma -di -ma, you have a millisecond of sunshine and then it's gone but you can rip our hearts out with that hard work but amazing work i this is thank glorious you. thank you <laughs> to all the other composers we will hear from, but it just does not get better than that. Sorry. <laughs> handle, handle. Love you. But, okay, well, Verdi's okay, too. <laughs> Verdi's okay, too. Jasmine. Hello, my name is Jasmine Saunders, and today I'll be singing Caro Nome from Rigoletto. Oh, <laughs> 
Jasmine's 35, and no, I'm just kidding, she's 23. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was literally singing Berta's aria and Must the Winter Come So Soon when I was 23. You got a bright future, kid. Did you feel present? Yes. What was your experience? Because, so, she sings this aria a lot for auditions, obviously. Um, and it's your first aria. You've been singing it for a while. It's glorious. Um, what Did you feel something different now compared to those times? What was your experience yeah, with this? Yeah, I think while walking around this 
space with you, I was preoccupied, so I really, there was no room for me to kind of judge myself and how I was sounding or how this phrase went. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Trayvon, too. That's big. Because if your brain and mind is occupied with judging yourself, how can it possibly express everything that you are? It's busy. It's be busy saying that's not good enough. And I know that's not why you sing. Right. I know you sing to do something very different, right? Yeah. So you're not doing your job if you're allowing the judgmental voice to come in. You're not doing your job. Right. We think we are, as singers, we think we're being diligent. We think we're being hard on ourselves. That's gonna make us better. That I, I have to hold myself to a certain standard, because I can, because I, you know, I'm whatever. And, and we think being judgmental is actually gonna help us. All it does is get in the way. And it impedes the purity of your voice and your spirit to come through, and the character. And in order to hide what's going on in our heads, we present, and we act like an opera singer. And we make sure that everything is correct so that people won't actually see what's going on inside here. And we mask it through perfection, through posture, and we don't just go, I'm going to do my best. There is a time for discipline. There, again, Trayvon, this is what we spoke about. There's a time to, to I mean, be hard. Yeah, I think being hard on ourselves can be good in moderation because we've chosen a profession where perfection is the standard. It's never ever achieved. Never. It is never achieved. There is always more to drill and mine in music. There's no, it's music. It's our soul. It's our spirit. It's, it's Mozart coming to life from 300 years ago or Verdi. And when you sing Caro Nome, it's all of those other sopranos that have sung it She's, they're all in there too. So there's no it, there's no perfection. We have to have a lot of discipline, a lot of tenacity, a lot of grace, a lot of patience to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then we have to say, it is what it is today. I've done my best. But that thing where you think you're being diligent and a good student and a good young artist because the music deserves it, etc. And that ju and that wasn't good enough and that wasn't good enough and let me be careful here. All you're doing is putting on a mask and impeding yourself. So you got really present in this aria by remembering the story. I me this is how I, I love question prompts. Oh no, what's dad gonna say? Oh no, but what is he gonna do? Oh but did he kiss me? Yeah. I love that because it keeps me present. And it keeps me having to find the right way to say it. And now I want to go really high, and now I have to go into a staccato. <laughs> Dad's in the other room. <laughs> so I love, I, I don't know if it's subtext exactly, but it's, it's imagination that's like percolating and boiling. And it's always alive. And if my brain is busy with that, and every once in a while like checks in, like, oh, release the tongue or release back. OK, yeah, 5% of that is, is good to keep in. But that's where you come to life. Yesterday we saw Donna Anna, and today we see Jilda, when you're present. And when you go into protective, judgmental, good student singing, we see 23-year-old Jasmine, who has a lot of talent. And we love your sound, but we don't cry. <laughs> and when you're Jilda, we cry. Make sense? Yes. I don't want to do anything else with you today. I think that's like, it's just magnificent. Okay. It's beautiful. Thank you. You got it. How many 
of you are singers? How many of you are non-singers? Hey, y'all don't know how brave that is. <laughs> the singers in here, and it's just, it's so brave and it's so beautiful. And Jasmine, uh, the other singers that are watching this, it also empowers them, gives them freedom, and it's great. And it's, it's just, it's inspiring. Speaking of, can we finish with Handel today? Yay, Karen! Bring your cello. There you go, there you go, got it. All right. So start right away in the center of the, yeah. Pick up on what we did with Augustine. Yes. Yeah. Hello, my name is Karen Mathilde heyer Hovd. I come, <laughs> <laughs> I come from Norway, and uh, today we're going to do uh, Seize Ruler of the Day to Rise from Hercules by Handel.
look at the whole roll. She's so rich. You make me miss her. I like. It. I mean, not that it's. It's not about me, but I, I mean, my God, it's just. I will never comprehend how Handel got the psychology of a woman so deeply. It's just really, it's, it's incredible. Um, what a gift to have you sing this for us. It's just really, it's a gift. Um, and it's so pure and so generous how you share it. Um, I... I kind of don't want to work on it because I just want you to l just let this be what it is with yours, but we can also work a bit. And I can share some ideas, but Please. really, they're like ideas. And now that you're back home, <laughs> your cello, you're so beautifully musical that these are really tricks or, or ideas or you know jewels to put in your basket and then you choose if you want or when to use them you know but there's a couple things there's what I what I think is a, a tricky thing about an aria like this it's just continuo so you can kind of do what you want and it's a really precious fine line between going there and tipping over into milking it mm. for lack of a better word and it requires a little bit of discipline. Well, maybe not. Maybe it requires trust to let also how he structured it arrive. I'll, I've mentioned this a couple times, but I love reminding myself about it, and um, it's been on my mind recently too. Leonard Folia, great stage director, I did his original production of Dead Man Walking, and I worked with him three times on it. And there's a lot to milk and to show and to suffer in that piece. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time, it was at City Opera, 100 years ago, and I was doing the, the duet, very brief duet with Joe's mother. It was Cheryl Wood at Woods at, the, at City Opera. And it's right before Sister Helen has a breakdown of going, ah, oh, who's going to be with me? And the mother is really suffering, and I was suffering alongside her, and I was really feeling it, and I was really acting it. And Lenny, in his amazing, beautiful wisdom, pulled me aside. He always gave kind of personal notes privately, never in front of like, well, that doesn't work. No, he pulled apart, and he goes, Joyce, I see everything you're doing, and I get it. I get it. He goes, I just want to let you know, sometimes as an audience member, I want space to decide what I think you're feeling. Mm. And if you show everything and you don't leave space, I'm, I feel like I'm not part of it. Mm. And it's not always easy to, to judge, you know? Um, and I'm not implying that you're doing that here. Yeah. I'm not. But it's just sometimes... You can also, it's a Janet Baker thing. Did you Google her? <laughs> Augustine, did you Google her? <laughs> so do your homework before tomorrow morning. Janet Baker did this great, I mean, supremely. She had a totally in the marrow of all of it, but also with almost a detachment so that somehow the emotion was even more poignant. And this is one of those pieces that you can't not feel it when you sing it. Mm. But you also have to make sure that you're never tipping over to where you're not conveying with your voice everything you want to convey as best you can. Mm. So that all of that having been said, I think it, it was the needle was going towards indulgent a little mm -hmm. too soon. Mm -hmm. And so when you get to the final phrase, we feel like we've already been there. Mm. And it doesn't take us quite enough as like by surprise. So it's just to keep that inner pulse a little bit more, a little bit more, Yeah, you know? Mm. Um, 
I also feel like when you have a really long note at the end of the phrase, the payoff is there to find a way to make it to the end of, of the phrase if you can. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in this place for holes would see you, see. Mm. It's hard, these phrases are so long. <laughs> Again, that's also then, we want to find the tempo that is larghetto. Mm. We want it to be largo, mm -hmm. but it's larghetto. Mm. Just so we avoid any, I don't think it's about it, what's on the metronome. It's about the feel of it, the phrasing of it. The minute it goes vertical, it's too slow. The minute you feel it, da da bee da bee da ba, you're in trouble. It's it's too slow. Mm. Same tempo. Da ba dee da bee da bee. It's not too slow. Mm -hmm. It's the same marking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to make sure it's always horizontal. Mm -hmm. In this piece, always mm -hmm. horizontal. Can we just start the aria? Yeah. Um. Yeah, and come back a little bit to this, this sensation of how long that phrase is, that very easy sustaining, yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you just give us a measure, Justina? It's already going. You're just joining the line. Ta, a. Great, yeah, now say the text with that horizontal. Yeah. So, I got yeah. We still need the text, yeah. the, the syntax. Yeah. You know? Yeah. ruler of the day to rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And And it's all for nothing. Yeah. So you he, you bring it up. He made a peel. It doesn't matter. With an endless night, then his falls. Don't let it be any trill or or ornament there. You kind yeah. of let it release into something normal. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How would you do it on the cello? Young, young, young. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah play, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's go. Good for you on that phrase. See, you can do it. Yeah. Just know where you're going mm. and just keep releasing air. Release, 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 and then it'll be good. Mm. Can we go the third system? Cease, ruler of the day. Mm. Cease. Release. 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 Release.
try it without a crescendo. Okay. See what happens. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> beautiful it's just really amazing those are suggestions play with it because she's a powerful woman look at the whole role and you'll see she had most of her arias are rage and manipulation okay. passive aggressive manipulation and this is the she just all the power is gone and he lied to you mm. he betrayed you and I don't get any help from you either. <laughs> I see you. I know you knew he, what he was, you know, it's just that. But you also don't have the fight anymore in you. Mm. But every once in a while you feel how it builds up to the yeah. There's a little bit of that fight that is so ingrained in you but you no longer have the fuel to sustain it. Mm. But it's nice to let that rise up. Mm. I kind of love no crescendo sure, at the yeah, end. Me too. <laughs> because it, it, you feel how it holds us? We expect that. Mm. And when you just die on the note. Mm. Is We've all been there, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's somehow very human that way. Mm. The more in that color you get, the more you have to use your words. Mm -hmm. And you were doing it now. His falsehood seal. It just also takes us more into the marrow when you use the consonants like that. Yeah. So it's not just about sound. Part of this aria is about sound, the color that the that the breath is, is ah, painting and sculpting. But don't forget the words. They will also help you mold the, the clay of the sorrow mm. of this. Yeah. We can work on the recit later. Mm -hmm. but, and in Handel, just never just do a trill. No, okay. You gotta know why it's there and, and <laughs> surprise yourself with how you, it shouldn't always be da 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 di da di da di da pi da i and stop it in a different place and change the color midst of it just so that it's there for a reason, yeah. Wow, that like that's soul food. That's soul food. Thank you. Yeah. a moment to have a special shout out for Justina and Joel, our amazing pianists. Thank you guys. Uh, beautiful. They're like, they're the rock of Gibraltar for all of us here and they, they support us a lot and singers come and they're nervous and when we have that mm, support, we're, we're very grateful. I do believe we have time for a few questions without running over, which makes me Happy for you all. Hello, sir. There will be a microphone coming around so everybody at home can hear. Thank you. First of all, that was absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Worth coming from London for, I have to tell you. So there you go. Wow. What, what I'd like to ask you, if I may, is do you share with your singers your enthusiasm for bits of the repertoire that are perhaps a little bit unknown? I mean, you always attack things with such passion and vigor. 
all of that. And I was in Paris when you did Camille Claudel uh, Into the Fire, which was a bit unusual. I thought you were going into the fire. There you were in Paris, Radio France, a French subject singing an American composer, Jay Heggie, in English, and you wowed them. But what I wondered was, do you encourage your students or singers that you're dealing with to look at parts of the repertoire that might, they might miss, about which you're very passionate? I'd love to hear that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I, thank you. It was only one concert. That made me so sad. I, I wish there had been more. It was, um, that was very special, it was uh, Radio France, and we really felt like we brought Camille Black back to Paris with that. Um, it's an, it's, I think, one of the great song cycles ever, not only of modern times. It's an incredible cycle. Um, text by Gene Shear. And Jake Heggie is the composer. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, what, a, what a month for him. Um, you know, I think I, I don't consciously, purposefully do that other than just by performing things like that. And by, I mean, I've, hmm, I've really deliberately chosen to kind of craft my own vision of projects that I have the ability to do, not only repertoire-wise, um, but also how I program. Um, in recitals, for example, or expanding a typical recital to include educational elements or um, a very specific theme, but then I ask the presenter to do a workshop around it or to try and um, expand our idea of what presenting classical music looks like because not one cell of me thinks that the classical music is dying or not relevant or doesn't impact people's lives. Not one second, that is lazy thinking. But I do think the way we present it can be examined and looked at. Um, lighting. We walk in and the soloist isn't lit and it's two dimensional yellow lighting. If you're a 21 year old or 16 year old, you come in immediately you go, I don't know what this is, because it just doesn't look inviting. If you're 70 years old and you studied piano and your grandparents took you to the symphony and the opera and you're coming to hear Mahler, you already know what world you're coming into and you can't wait to experience this version of it. But the younger audience that does not have music in the schools, to our shame, and maybe the parents are too busy, and that idea of handing off this experience isn't um, as, that those kids just aren't exposed to it. I think the way we present it can be really examined and turned on its head, actually. Um, I think people want to talk about it. I think people want to hear why we're programming certain things. I think people need a little bit of guidance. They're not going to, they don't arrive early to read the program notes. They arrive to have an experience. And so I talk from the stage, and I say, here's why I chose Debussy. Here's why I'm this, what this new cycle is about. Um, not everybody loves that, but I love it, and so I do it. And, and I think it's been a really difficult couple years for our industry, but I look at it as it's a moment for innovation to fly. And the more empowered young artists are, and the more creative, and the more imagination, greatest weapon for a young singer or young musician, I think, is your imagination once your technique is settled. The more of that we have, uh, and it can include new works, it can include looking at old works in a new way, not to reinvent it and not to draw attention to like a concept, but just to say, let's see what this looks like. What does this feel like? And so even if I don't necessarily mm, teach it or preach it, I feel like I'm doing it. <coughs> and you know, those that it speaks to will pick it up and run with it, and, and who knows what they're going to do with it. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hi. Yes. 
Hello, I am a composer, and this question has emboldened me. So I have um, a curiosity about what draws you to contemporary texts, and if you would just speak about text from your personal perspective mm. um, for composers. Yeah. Um, I one of the cool last year was a cool year for me because I did the hours by Kevin Putz and he was so gracious he let me be really interactive about um, working with the score um, th what he sent was so amazing and wonderful and she was on the page like boom but I looked at it I was like hey Kevin you know like you wrote a half note, and then there's three measures of orchestra that change the harmony, and if you let me sing over those three measures, I can do magic. <laughs> like, I think I can make magic happen. He's like, oh yeah, great. So that kind of collaboration was super exciting to me. And then in the spring, I did a piece by Todd Macover called The Overstory Overture, based on the Richard Powers novel. I had done an opera of Todd's in 1998 uh, called Resurrection, which was una bomba. I mean, it was, I, I was, it was based on the Tolstoy novel. I was a drunk prostitute. It was amazing. I loved it. It was amazing. It was so much fun. Really hard. And so when Todd asked me about this, I said, Todd, I don't have a lot of time to learn it. I'm pretty busy. So give me a melody or two. And, and then it's like, I want it. I want there to be room for emotion to come into it. Not all contemporary music do I respond to as like emotional, and so that's not kind of where I put my energy. Other people are good at that, it's not me. I like to still feel like I'm telling a story. But the text, to, to the heart of your question, for me, and I've told singers this, I think the words are actually my instrument, much more than this. The words determine just about everything for me, along with the harmonic structure of the orchestra or the piano. As we've been working on, you know, how you sculpt with the text, how you use it, how you search for the words, even though you've studied them for six months and you know them, how you search for them and create it in the moment is really important. And I, for me, it's the, it's where I'm going. Otherwise, it's just sound. And and, you know, we've had vocalises that are beautiful that touch us, but without the words, ah, what's the point? Um, and so it's that. That's where I start and finish, and all the other stuff fills it out. But but those, that's the alpha and omega for me. One thing I miss in some contemporary work is melismas. It's every syllable has a note. And I think sometimes that's really effective in a recitative, et cetera, when there's a lot of really important information. But when we get into the emotional world, I also want to I, I want to be in that time bubble. What Stile Amare gives us, it gives us this like suspended time where I get to actually sit with the emotion for a while. That's the power of music for me, rather than a play. And I think some modern operas are sort of sung plays. And can be interesting if the production's really good. But after a while, my ear gets really tired of, of having to, to uh, focus that hard. And I think, I, and, and Jake, has, uh, Jake told me this, um, Dead Man Walking doesn't really have melismas, a few. And the ones that are there, we like, wow, they, they stop when Joe goes, everything is going to be, it's like, wow. When he wrote Great Scott for me, it was a sort of parody of a, of a bel canto opera. And he's like, oh, God, Joyce, I'm writing melismas, and I didn't realize how great they are. I'm like, yes, they are great. <laughs> like, that's where, that's where we shine our mo the, the most. And what I see with a lot of opera librettos today, they're so textually dense, because it's all about plot, 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 because we don't trust that an audience is going to get the emotional thing. So we've got to get the plot, 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 plot. 
And then it's just really dense and there's not that space that I was talking about to enter as the audience member to just sit in the emotion for a bit. So it's like what I, the, the best compositions that I find, Todd did so many melismas and overstory. It's one of the coolest pieces I've ever done. I hope I get to do it again. Um, I hope I get to do it again. <laughs> um, I, um, it's what the voice does best. And I think composers in general are missing out on an opportunity. It doesn't mean it all has to be lyrical melismic, not at all. But when we really need that emotional impact, let the voice do what it does. That's why we love Una Furtiva Lagrima, the tune, the melody. And to highlight that at really strategic moments in an opera, I think it would, it would mm, make us remember more operas that are being written and make us want to live in them a little bit longer, rather than just experience it as a cool production. Yeah. Hello. Hi, beautiful. Hi, Ms. Giovinato. It is so wonderful to you see you. You had better call me Joyce. <laughs> Don't make me come back there. Um, <laughs> this is amazing member of the Metropolitan Opera Chorus. No. She's tireless, <laughs> amazing, She's world class. <laughs> I love you guys. This, uh, you are, you know, an international icon and uh, a superstar. You've been traveling the world for a long, long time. You have never aged. Your voice gets better and better every year. I don't know how you do it. I actually just want to know, what do you do to rest and take care of yourself? You're always traveling. You are always working. You are, ne I've never seen you in a bad mood. You are the most wonderful, generous, kind, loving person. Do my you, partner here? Uh, <laughs> he could, <laughs> he might beg to differ. <laughs> do, you, uh, do, you, do you sleep a lot? I just, I don't never see you sleep, I never see you rest, I never see, <laughs> so where is the Oscar I Wilde wear comfortable uh, pit shoes photograph, now. the picture in the attic? <laughs> I do, I, yeah, sleep for me is like number one. I, I, it's true, I, I, if I can sleep in, I will. Um, I, I go to nature now, I go to nature, which is amazing. But also, I think part of it is that, hmm, early on, early on when I was starting my career, like the first three or four years of my career, I actually wasn't really happy. And I was living the dream. I was singing, I just told you guys this story. When I left the Houston Grand Opera studio in 1997 or 98, I was 28 years old. I didn't have management. No American management wanted to take me. They'll deny it now. But I couldn't get American management. But I had three jobs booked. Hansel for the Tulsa Opera, my first Rosina for the Kentucky Opera, and a second Rosina at Arizona Opera. And I was pretty sure I was going to have, if I was lucky, an American regional career. And I went to do the Domingo competition uh, in Hamburg, my second try at it, and I, took, I shared second prize with Ludovic Tetzier. Uh, and a manager in London said, I think you're going to be a huge star, and I want you for worldwide management. And I went, what, what's, what's, sorry, what's that? sorry, what? Um, and I went to Europe, and he said, you've got to come do some auditions, because nobody over here knows you. I did 13 auditions in 16 days. Mm -hmm. And it was December, and I stupidly started buying Christmas gifts at the start of the vacation. <laughs> so my luggage got so heavy by the end, and I was hating life. I, and it were, they were um, B and C level houses, which was my level. And I got 12 outright rejections. Uh, we don't have anything for her. We're not looking for a lyric mezzo. No, no it's not for us. And my 13th audition on the 16th day, and boy was I over it, was the Paris Opera. And they called that afternoon and said, we, two hours later, said we have a new production of Barber of Seville. 
um, we want Joyce. And I said, for Berta? Because <laughs> I used to sing that aria. I, that was my audition aria when I was in college, no joke. Um, and I started at A-level houses in Europe, Madrid, La Scala, Paris, London is where I started. And I was living the dream, and I wasn't happy because I was, all I could see is where I wasn't. I wasn't home. I was, wasn't there for the birthday party. I wasn't there when my sister was sick or, you know, this. And I was, I always was thinking I should be somewhere else. I'm coming to your, the answer. Sorry, this got long-winded. Um, and I, at one point I just said, I'm living the dream and I'm not happy. And that's insanity. And I literally, I kind of made a decision to say that's enough of that. And I think the only way to actually really enjoy this is to be present. And I, some, I did a lot of, you know, work and reading and that kind of stuff to figure out how to do that. Um, so that if I'm in a master class and I'm working with students or I'm talking q and A, I'm really here. I'm really with you. And then when I'm home, I'm really home. And that's less tiring. Because I'm not thinking, oh, I should be there, I should be doing this, or I have to do that. And I mean, I'm not always successful at it by any means, but that, it's like being on highway driving rather than city driving and stopping and starting and running a bunch of errands. It's like I just, I try to be really where I am. And I made a really conscious decision after some difficult times early on as a young artist. I was like, I am not letting anyone I don't care who they are, take my joy from this because I am the most privileged person that I know in the world to get to sing and to sing this music. How dare I let anybody take my joy? And it's not their responsibility, it's mine. It's my responsibility to take care and, and, and honor that. It's sacred, it's sacred, the privilege of standing on a stage and bringing to life Handel or Mozart or Strauss or Heggy or Macover. It's a privilege and you have to earn the right to be there, which is all the hard work, which is all the discipline, which is, is working for perfection. And then you stand here and you go, I'm the luckiest person in the world. And if something or someone or a situation is taking your joy, you've gotten off track. And you've got to stop and figure it out. Okay, what am I missing? What am I, where did I, what am I blocking? Who am I interacting with? What am I taking personally? What am I not feeding enough of? Where's my head? Is it in judgment mode or is it in joy? Like, wow, I still can't sing that, but I, I love that I'm trying, you know? So it's, and sometimes I have to fake it until I make it. But I'm really, I'm really stubborn about that. I love what I do. And I don't care who you are or how much power you have. I don't need to be bitter or angry that you don't share the same joy as me or that you have a different agenda at play. That's yours. That's your karma. And you're the one who's missing out. You're the, I, I, I feel sorry for people that, that are not ensconced in joy in this business. You know, I mean, overall, we have bad days, we have difficult moments, but overall, it's too privileged a thing. And I'd say the same goes for audiences. Audiences that come in and say, oh, but that's not like this, or that's not like that. It's like, hold on. Don't forget what's happening in front of you. These people are opening their hearts to you, and they're doing the best that they can. And that's a gift that they do, as you see, they do so much work to give to you. And it's not always this, and it's not always that. It's not always the way it was. It's not always the way it was last week or that you saw on YouTube. But they're there, they're showing up, and they're giving you their all. And if you're coming and you're not enjoying it, I mean, it doesn't mean you have to like everything, but, but you come with a spirit of, of openness, say what's going to happen tonight. Yeah, and that keeps me rested. 
<laughs> kind of. And I take more time off than I used to. But yeah. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Beautiful job. Thank you, guys. Everybody, look at Chris. <laughs> Thank you, guys. After you.